I'm here today on uh, a notch hill. It's a beautiful sunny November day and I came specifically to Notch Hill because I'm interested in talking about Wabi Sabi and Sabi. These are two concepts uh, that originated, uh, certainly the words originated in Japan and they've become dear to my heart. Uh, they have helped me a lot in my own uh, growth as a person and uh, in dealing with some of my anxiety and it's something that I actually learned from my father uh, had in common with him was an appreciation for these qualities in nature sought them out he sought them out and I've sought them out and it wasn't until fairly late in my adult life that I had a name for them but um, they're important and so I want to spend some time today in this beautiful place uh, talking about these ideas and uh, showing some examples as well. I've come here to this particular habitat because I think it's conducive to Wabi Sabi. Um, there's something about our beautiful trees and oak trees that really uh, encapsulate or can encapsulate the beauty that we find uh, and call and name and label Wabi Sabi. Now Sabi is a different, uh, it's an element of Wabi Sabi certainly, uh, but it's an important um, experience in and of itself. It's an experience of positive loneliness or uh, solitude and in the best way solitude. You know, the reason that people seek out solitude is to experience Sabi. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Wabi-sabi is the beauty of things that are that have character, that have gained character as a result of age or as a result of, of um, wear and tear, as a result of the action of, of nature, of, of wind and rain and sand and uh, harsh conditions. And there's something about that, that desert experience, that um, harsh experience that actually produces a beauty that we connect with and realize and think wow this is amazing and so this is a good place for that there's something about the Gary Oak Meadows they are they tend to be drier they tend to be uh, oftentimes by the ocean uh, experiencing the, the harsh conditions there and so in that environment of harshness uh, or are certainly outside of uh, kind of the, the area where most creatures thrive um, we get these magical places like this one which are just so beautiful to behold so I've always been attracted to those I think humans in general are um, and so we're gonna explore a little bit a bit today and uh, and really discover some of its beauties it's a beautiful sunny day today uh, so part of what I'm interested in is uh, uh, just uh, exploring that experience of Sabi. Um, as I me was mentioning earlier, Sabi is uh, it's a Japanese word. Um, it comes into English because we don't actually have a good term uh, in English that's kind of like an equivalent translation. Um, I experienced Sabi as a youth um, my father was a, a strong influence on me, um, he used to take us into the wilderness uh, for uh, many uh, experiences uh, typical of his generation. We would go hunting and fishing and that sort of thing. Uh, but oftentimes when we were there, the focus would, would actually turn from whatever that activity was that, that brought us to uh, the wilderness to just being just being there, uh, enjoying uh, the beauty of a place. Um, and those times with my father were extremely memorable uh, and very important to me, very formative. Uh, it wasn't until later in my life um, that I came across the term Wabi Sabi. It was in a book on paper making. And I immediately knew that this was, was something that I had experienced. Uh, it was something I valued and so having the name for it was really a powerful experience 
I subsequently wrote a couple of books on the topic, and I've, I've been exploring it in depth for some time since then. So I want to give a little bit of an overview, an introduction to the concepts both of, of wabi-sabi and of sabi. And, uh, and I couldn't think of a better place to do it than here on, uh, on the, the hillside surrounding Notch Hill. Um, this is a lovely place. Um, it, it, it really does allow for uh, the experience of Sabi. And I'm really close to, to you know, there's houses right here. Uh, I'm very close to civilization and we tend to think of Sabi as an experience that we can only have in nature when we're alone. And, you know, I think that's probably true, but we don't have to go far to find uh, a place that we can really uh, experience it. Um, and these places in particular are uh, conducive to that. Uh, when I come here and I just look, and I'm just looking now and there's a, an Arbutus curving out from under a fir tree there. And of course, these, uh, this is a, this is an oak right behind me here. Um, and it's got all that lichen hanging on it. And then behind that is a big old Arbutus, beautiful tree. And I'm gonna go a little ways, or I'm gonna go around the hillside here and I'm gonna visit uh, one of my old tree friends, uh, Sister Jane. Uh, I've been coming to, to sit with Sister Jane uh, for a number of years now. And uh, it's a place that I can reliably enter into that state of Sabi. So. Uh, we'll go over there and, and uh, say hello to her. One day as I was uh, coming down from Notch Hill, I decided to explore some of the forest uh, surrounding the hill. And uh, as I was walking through the forest, I saw some light, uh, an opening, and I came out into this um, rocky area where there was this prominent Arbutus tree, and I had a real sense of uh, entering into a particularly special place. Uh, the whole area is lovely, but this was different. As I stepped out uh, from the trees into the opening, I, I had a sense that I was entering a sacred space. And I don't use that term lightly. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the forest, and there's lots of beautiful places, but um, this was something special. It was the particular combination of rocks and moss and this one particular tree, which was uh, kind of, you know, on the, on the verge of dying. But, uh, but in that moment, there was a tremendous uh, a realization that I'd stumbled upon something quite special, uh, something that was very wabi-sabi. So this is the tree here. This is... Um, a tree that I, I named Sister Jane after spending quite a bit of time here. As we come up the tree here, you can see that uh, there's a lot of, of uh, damage to, uh, to it. Um, it's kind of got these very knobbly, wrinkly uh, wounds uh, here on the bark. And I don't know about you, but like when I look at these you know, it just, it's very impressive. It's um, got all this character that is hard to describe. It's, uh, it's really beautiful to me. It's kind of like a sculpture, I guess. And, uh, and I just love it. I, I love Arbutus in general, but this particular tree has very much captured my attention and uh, I can come here and look at this very intricate curls and swirls along the bark for hours because it's just so interesting to see how how this tree has has attempted to grow over the years and uh, was is still successful but you know life is hard life is hard and that's part of the lesson uh, that I find in these places is that, yeah, this is a this is a period this is a place that is rocky. Uh, you know, this, we're on a little rocky promontory here, and 
the forest is right here and then of course the beautiful tree here and I don't know how long she's been growing here but quite some time and I just love the sense of tenacity the sense of hanging on of courage of you know life that just keeps trying I mean look at look at these branches over here where where new growth has occurred all summer long and uh, and yet there's not a huge amount of the tree that actually is still growing most of it has died back so how much longer Jane will live I don't know um, but uh, for the time being I will keep coming and enjoying this place now you also see some wonderful things nearby here uh, there's this little patch of fern right here that I really love um, so much of the, the moss on these rocks is is very special I love the way the um, pieces of, of the tree have, have fallen and landed on the rock here and how the moss is is enveloping it it's uh, it's that wonderful and beautiful way in which nature is constantly reusing uh, taking advantage of all the energy that's been collected by the trees uh, and turning them back into soil all the bacteria that is involved in the process but I mean just look at this this is such a cool environment and these these uh, look at these little ferns here isn't that incredible I just love those little ferns I think those are licorice ferns and they're just so beautiful there's lung some kind of a, a wart lung wart or something there but just so much life all along this, this area and you'll see in some of my photos that uh, these little orange mycena mushrooms um, I've been taking pictures of them, of them earlier here today and then we have this all this reindeer reindeer lichen I believe it's called all through this area very beautiful combination of the light lichen those weathered uh, branches and then all of this moss growing here it's just just really beautiful and a very special place a place that deserves to be visited often and and really appreciated for for what it is because it is a, a really really special place so, so I just wanted to share that with you I would say that this is a very wabi-sabi place it's a place of character it's a place of wonder uh, it's a place where we can really be confronted with how wounds make things can not always but can make things more beautiful this old tree is such a beautiful old tree so beautiful and yet so damaged and that's one of the things that has attracted people to Wabi Sabi over the years is the fact that this paradoxical way in which harsh environments can can bring out beauty in the things that grow here and in us too because as we encounter these beautiful objects uh, of nature these living sculptures then we're affected by them so encourage you to find your own place like this and spend some time here and and if you're like me you'll probably want to take some pictures and really try to capture some of that beauty that there is in these in these places one of the elements of Sabi that is important to add here at the end is 
the way in which that experience of positive loneliness, which we experience when we encounter these beautiful uh, objects in nature that are wabi-sabi, the experience of sabi is one in which we start to let our distinctions about um, good and bad drop away. So the loneliness is embraced and in, in that we then start to experience an expansion of our our awareness and um, that expansion, that openness, that receptivity is really uh, what uh, Basho, the poet, the Japanese poet, seized upon as something really significant for for the poet. And I think it's also really significant for a photographer as well, especially one like me who really enjoys getting out of photographing these amazing things. So anyways, thought I would mention that and uh, we're going to explore this a little bit further in the next video, but that's it for now. So I hope you have a great uh, week and get out and get some good pictures and we'll see you next time.